Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Adamant Algorithm, this is Surain. In this video we are going to see how to attract pickup objects automatically in the event of something happens. For example, in here, uh, if my character walk towards the special power which is a magnet, as soon as this character gets this power, all the coins and pickup objects that is available in the scene comes rushing towards the player. Um, well, for, this is the logic I do have. Uh, the logic might change uh, based upon your own events that is going to happen in your own game. So I will demonstrate uh, what would be the effect we are looking at at the end of this video. Now, so let me quickly play this game. Okay, um, so everything is nice and clean and the coins are waiting to be picked up. Now my character walked towards it and it grabs the magnet. Oh la la, that's exactly what we want. So how to do this effect? We are actually going to use a very simple uh, technique in a C sharp script called uh, vector3.lerp. I'll quickly tell you about uh, what is lerp and how to use it properly. Before that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my project so it will be easy for me to demonstrate from the scratch. Okay, here we go. My project is cleaned up and now it's ready for us to demonstrate. Now what I do have in front of me, I'm going to just quickly tell you guys. Uh, first of all, I do have a prefab of the coin. Uh, this is the coin sprite sheet, so I got it. If you're wondering how did I actually made uh, uh, individual pictures from a sprite sheet, I do have another tutorial. I'll go th uh, my the description is in my um, comment section. And I do have another um, sprite, which is a simple magnet. And these scripts I'm going to delete. Oops, I forgot to delete it. Um, okay, is it done or not? Yeah, it's gone. And I have a few uh, very quick animation for uh, the coin to rotate. Um, but for everything that I'm saying right now, I do have a separate tutorial for that. But this particular video is going to concentrate about just one thing, how to attract objects towards the player. Now I have uh, a magnet and I have a, a collider attached to my magnet, a very simple collider. And I have a coin prefab. And as I said, this animator is responsible for rotating the coin. And I have a circle collider that is attached to the coin. And I have a player object and again I do have a box collider and a rigid body 2D which is set into kinematic because I'm not moving uh, the character uh, from the code because I don't want to bother my time in doing a character motion for this particular exercise. So I'm not doing it uh, from the code. So that's about uh, what I have. First of all, let's actually go ahead and uh, go with this coin and make it move. So it's always a good practice that uh, we need to uh, prototype with one particular object. If that works, we can convert that into a multiple copies of prefab. Um, okay, and before that, I do have another habit. Uh, whenever I create a pickable object, sorry, a pickup object, I do tag them because I would never know when I'm going to use them in the script. So as you can see, coin, I have a tag coin attached to it and magnet has a tag magnet attached to that and the player do have a tag called player. Now, that being said, let's without further ado, let's go ahead and make our coin to move towards the player. For that option, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the coin prefab so that whatever changes I do would reflect in all prefabs if I do have multiple copies. I don't have now, but it's a good practice. I go to add, add component and I'll start typing coin script. It's a new script, create an ad. Okay, let's wait. Coin script, yet it's done. Just double click. Here we go. So in here, what we need to type is, first of all, let's move our update, uh, sorry, let's move our coin. For that, I'm going to create a new method saying void move towards player. That's gonna be my method. So what I'm gonna do is like transform dot position of this coin is equal to so what we need to do is we need to move towards the player, correct? 
and for that one we need to have is first of all we need to find out where our player is for that we need to declare a game object uh, game object oops sorry what is that typographical mistake okay game object I'm gonna call it my player okay and in the start function I'm going to refer my player and I'm going to find where is my player is so I'm gonna say game object that find uh, find game object with the tag so what is the tag tag I have given as I mentioned earlier the tag is player now what happens is in here I'm actually ask uh, declaring a game object called my player and in the start function and I'm actually calling for I'm finding where is my player with the tag name and that's why I told you before it's always a good practice to tag your objects in the unity editor and this will essentially find my player reference and reference it in my uh, variable so in here it will be easy for me to declare where my player would be so transform that position is equal to vector3 dot lurk okay so what this essentially does is as you can see the tooltip lerp stands for linear interpolation in mathematics so what it does is it actually represents a movement of an object from a position 0 to 1 uh, 0 being the starting position 1 being the target position if it is too confusing for you forget about mathematics let's let's see what it does in here the syntax is where you are or what is your current position we need to say this dot transform dot position which means my current position of the coin comma towards where you want to go I want to go towards the player and we already have the player reference here so I'm gonna say I'm going towards my player dot transform dot position that's where I want to go okay how do you want to go how fast do you want to go so the T uh, represents the time I would say like three frames per second but do not forget time dot delta time without time of delta time the frames per second would be uncontrollable according to the hardware you are using so we better go for time dot delta time and that's it so in the update we quickly check whether this works so I'm gonna say move towards player and I'll go back here wait for it to compile okay it's done so I'll go quickly and click the play button there we go cool the coin comes and arrives and it waits and see this is the another thing so wherever my character goes the coin even if this is the effect you might need you know you're welcome you can use it anywhere you want which means a follow script so you're done with the follow script now but this is not the effect we are looking for so what we need to do is move towards player uh, we, we, are, we should be happy because our single line of code works now. Now our condition would be now I don't want this coin to move towards my player when I press the play button which is the starting of the game. I want the coin to move towards the player only when the player touches the magnet. So how we are going to do? We need to find out when the magnet is touched. So for that we are actually going to use a condition. So how to declare this condition is uh, we can have it here as a public static variable public static um, I'm gonna say uh, is magnet active magnet active it's equal to false oops what type of it okay what type of variable is supposed to public static pool this is gonna be a boolean so I'm gonna say it's sorry false which means quickly uh, let me tell you my logic so when this magnet active becomes true I need this to happen now there is no condition correct so that's what we're gonna do now if you note 
uh, the word static this means this can be used in a different script from this script I have done a separate tutorial on the topic if you want to see that there should be an information icon right now on the top right corner of the video if you click that that will take you to the uh, another tutorial which I'm talking about so now I'm gonna assume that you guys know what is called a static variable so I'm gonna move forward with what I'm doing so public static goal my active is um, sorry magnet active is equal to false so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an if statement if magnet active which means if the magnet is active this will return as true if magnet is active then I want to do this okay so how to make the magnet active and how to read it from the script so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the player okay so we're gonna create a new component which is a new script for player script create an ad wait for it to finish it so what are the components again we have in player we have box collider and this is what you need to be noting noting um noting down um, so I have I have one collider on my character and the player and I made it into a trigger because I'm going to use on trigger enter to the that function for that it must be a trigger now now let me just go ahead for my player script now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check on trigger enter to D okay so if the other object which I am the player is touching if other dot game object dot compare tag if the other object which is colliding with the player is having a tag name magnet then what we need to do is uh, we access that uh, what you call the the coin script we have uh, the magnet active right so how to um, access it is we click on sorry we say coin script dot magnet active you can access that from here because please don't uh, forget it's a public static variable so it can be accessed by any other C sharp script so coin script dot magnet active equal to becomes true and you know what happens when it becomes true Oops. so when it becomes true our coin will start moving so we will double check before we get uh, before we embarrass ourselves uh, the magnet is tagged magnet and the player has is collider is, is, is trigger so let's play this there we go so now unless and until the character sorry uh, so unless and until the character touches the magnet nothing will happen the moment you touches it the character uh, the coins are triggered now we it's nearly 85 percentage we have achieved now what we need to do is we need to first of all when you touch the magnet the magnet should disappear so what we need to do is we go to the player script we say coin script after making it true we can say uh, other dot game object dot set active is false so I am deactivating the magnet sprite from our game screen and I'm gonna have one more script I'm saying if what if the other uh, game object that is colliding with the player is a coin we need to do something about it correct so what we're gonna do is other dot game object dot compare tag if it is a coin then what we need to do is we are going to say uh, other dot game object I'm deactivating the coin as well once it touches the player so it looks more natural um, set that oops dot set active is false oops it's not a string false okay so we go here and check our prototype um, 
I love Unity because it supports iterative uh, development, and this is what I call iterative development. Um, okay, so now I click this. Done. So now what you could do is you can go ahead and do whatever, for example, the moment the character takes the magnet, you can animate the character as if it possesses a power and you can use some visual effects. And when the coin touches the uh, player, you can destroy the coin or set it active false. And you can also play cling kind of sound, whatever you want to do. It's totally up to you. So the last but not least, what you could do now is our one, our magnet is ready and our coin is ready. So what you could do is to make sure you make multiple copies of your coin. Before that, um, make sure everything inside is okay. Magnet, no, magnet don't have anything. So coin inside the script is fine. Check inside whether the script is there. Yep. Because I need to make multiple copies. Control D, so wherever you want. Control D, Control D, Control D. I don't want to make, uh, waste your time, so this <laughs> this should be okay. Now um, let's go ahead. Okay, move the character where you want, and there we go. Okay, so. If you have come this far in this video, I think you uh, like the content of this video on the channel and I would be really happy if you guys can support me by subscribing in my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for uh, watching this video and I wish you all the best with your Unity projects and I will come with more uh, type of uh, this type of videos and it will be always free, I promise. Okay guys, um, take care, stay inside the homes, stay safe. Alright, so I'll catch you soon with my another tutorial and right now I'm uh, taking off. Bye guys. Bye bye.